Hello. Today what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find uh, constellations and stars in the winter skies. Uh, this is primarily set up for January. I know we're running a little late because this is the toward the end of February, but this is uh, the sky that's still pretty much the same as uh, what it is uh, up there right now. Um, the constellations we're going to try to find are located down here a little lower. Um, they're located down here. We're going to find the constellations of Andromeda, Auriga, Cancer, Canis Major, Canis Minor. It's the big dog and the little dog. Andromeda actually is uh, Zeus's daughter, um, gets captured by Medusa, and is actually saved by Perseus, her main squeeze. Auriga is a charioteer, um, supposedly has a chari chariot being pulled by some sort of critters and uh, have goats or sheep or something inside. Um, does have one big star called Capella. Cancer the crab, one of the signs of the zodiac. Canis Major, the big dog. Canis Minor, the little dog, both with two big stars. Sirius actually being the second brightest star in our sky, following following the sun. Cassiopeia, Ethiopian queen. Cepheus, her king. Um, apparently uh, got Zeus mad one day and he banished them up into the sky so they can never bother anyone again. Draco the dragon. Gemini, another sign of the zodiac, the twins, uh, Castor and Pollux. Lepus, a bunny. Orion, the god of hunting. Pegasus, the flying horse. Perseus, again, the one who actually saves Andromeda by cutting the head off Medusa. Pisces, another sign of the zodiac, the fish. Pleiades, seven sisters, seven really bright stars, um, very, very bright blue stars, um, very young stars uh, located all bunched up together. Taurus the Bull, another sign of the Zodiac with its bright star Aldebaran. Ernest, uh, Ursa Major, Big Bear, Ursa Minor, which actually has Polaris, the North Star. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find, and I'm not going to write the names on here, I'm going to find them on this list, and then I'll put numbers down here and I'll actually coincide with the numbers up there. First thing I want to do is, uh, let's pick a color, I'm going to pick gold. Um, good star color. This is a negative image, which means all the black, which is normally the black of night, is white. All the bright stars um, are black. Um, you can see relative brightness of the star. has no bearing whatsoever on how big the star is or how close the star. It's a little bit of both. But what we are going to talk about first is location. Um, the first thing we're going to try to find is this little blob right here. and You can connect it any way you want to. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around with a little circle. And this is going to be constellation number, and maybe we should come down here and label these things. Um, this is going to be number one. This is going to be number two. Here's number three. Here's number four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten, and eleven, and twelve. Then we're going to find 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So 18 constellations, and we'll just call these uh, A, 4A, 5A, 9A, and B. We'll call this 11A and B. And we'll call this one 16A and 16A. Excuse me, 18A. Okay, so um, first thing we found were the seven sisters, the Pleiades. That's going to be number 15. Located right next to Pleiades is uh, Perseus. Perseus uh, looks like a cornucopia. Uh, if we were a little closer to Halloween um, or Thanksgiving, um, this is the thing that holds the fruit. And that is Perseus, so this is number 13. Um, Auriga actually looks to me like a home plate in a baseball game. It's supposed to be, again, a charioteer um, with critters pulling the carriage and critters in the carriage and that is Auriga so this is going to be number two. Um, located uh, sort of with this star with Auriga on um, this big triangle that's located right here this is 
our first sign of the zodiac. This is Taurus the bull. And Taurus is number 16. Where do I write 16? I guess I can put 16 right there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to circle the star. And that star goes along with 16. And down here you can see that is Aldebaran. Um, located right next to uh, number 16 is number 9. And this thing just looks like a big rectangle. To that big star, to this big star, back over there and then connecting these. Uh, not the best connection. I'm actually going to try that again. Connecting these two to that one, back down to this one, and to there. This guy's actually got a foot, and then connecting these three stars. This is Gemini. This is our number nine. And um, Castor and Pollux. Um, the way you're going to look at it, basically, uh, is uh, Castor is going to be this one. And Pollux is going to be this one. And you can actually see that's A and B. Um, maybe I should go ahead and uh, write A. This is B. This is A. Um, see these? Two right here. Actually, let me do the big one first. This is the big dog. This is going to be Canis Major. Um, Canis Major has a really big, bright star. It's called Sirius, and it is the brightest star in our sky other than the sun. Very easy star to see these times. Um, this dog is right now upside down. Um, the ears go off the nose, which is the big star. Then he's got a body that comes like this, and front legs, back leg and a tail. So he's sort of upside down. Legs are there, heads there, tails there. But this is Canis Major. This is our number four. And that is our number four A star. Okay, um, located right here, probably one of the easiest constellations to see, or what is called an asterism. Um, when you guys think of Orion's belt, um, Orion actually has more than just a belt. So if you just look at the belt, part of a constellation that's called an asterism. But um, Orion is upside down. If you actually connect the belt to two shoulders, um, sort of making an hourglass down here by the hips. Um, most people actually say he's got a shield or something up here um, which he's using to fight off uh, Taurus. Um, this is a red giant, um, a very red star. Makes him look like he's very angry and attacking Orion. A lot of people say that we can tell this is a man because they say this is Orion's head, small brain. I don't understand that. Um, but this is Orion. This is our number 11. Orion has two stars. It has Betelgeuse, or more commonly called Betelgeuse. Um, that star right there, and Rigel. Um, a neat thing about these two stars is uh, um, all constellations have a brightest star that's called the Alpha Star. Um, Betelgeuse is the Alpha Star. Um, Aldebaran is the Alpha Star. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one of these is the Alpha. Um, Procyon right there is the Alpha Star. Sirius is the Alpha Star. This is Regulus and Leo, which is not on our list, but that's the bright star. This is uh, Cygnus the Swan and Deneb the Tail, um, which is the bright star. This is Vega and Lyra, which is, again, the bright star. Those are all called Alpha. Um, believe it or not, but even some of these constellations over here, Pisces, uh, Triangulum, Aries, um, these guys all, all have a brightest star, although we're not going to learn them because I really can't differentiate between the dots that I have on here. But um, the two stars, um, Betelgeuse there, which is a red giant, 520 light years away. Um, that's to the point where we can actually take a look at um, things. I'm going to go back up here a little bit. Um, we can actually take a look at things. Um, that light hits you in the sky, in the eye tonight, that's been traveling at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, for about 520 years. Um, take 520 years from 2012 and uh, we're sitting right around 1492 so the light actually that left that that 
particular star in the constellation Orion uh, left that star before Columbus discovered America. This is the brightest star. This star is almost twice as far away as that star. This is a blue giant. Um, this is Rigel. Rigel is a, an incredibly big star. Um, either one of these, if they replaced the sun, um, we would be inside of it. But they're incredibly big stars. But this one, twice as far away and just a little bit dimmer than that star, at least in apparent brightness. Orion is the god of hunting. He's surrounded by lots of animals. He's got a uh, a bull right here. He's got a couple of good hunting dogs. Let me give you his other hunting dog. This is Canis Minor. You can tell because he's a lot smaller. Um, almost looks like a dachshund. Not sure why you would take a dachshund out hunting. But this is our number five. And that is our constellation um, for Procyon, which actually is part of Canis Minor. Underneath Orion, because again, remember this is his head, he's standing upside down in this particular sky. Um, the way we would actually take a look at this is the north would be down at this end, and I'll show you how we can figure that one out. So this is the southern sky, and you really want to look towards the southern sky. And how do you know the southern sky? Um, if you know where you're standing and you know where the sun actually travels across the sky right around noon, that's the direction of the southern sky. These guys are monster constellations. Um, you'd have a tough time holding your arm up at arm's length and covering um, some of these. These are the um, some of the brightest stars that we have in our sky. Um, they're some of the neatest stories in terms of Greek mythology. Um, if you get a chance to look at Greek mythology, look up some of these because they are totally cool. Um, this is Lepus, the bunny. And that's a good thing to actually have if you're a god of hunting. Um, you've got a bunny that you can hunt. hunt. Um, Lepus, we can't see the number, so I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, Lepus is our number 10. And I try to put these in alphabetical order. Um, maybe somebody that has more English, understands the alphabet, um, can check me, but I think I did a pretty decent job. But that is Lepus the bunny. Um, over here, next to uh, the little dog and Kent and uh, Gemini is another sign of the zodiac. This is called Cancer. Cancer um, is supposed to be a crab. I see it as a Y. Cancer is our number three. Located um, a little bit closer to the horizon, um, the point right about here, that's the zenith, so Perseus is pretty close to right up above our head. Um, but heading more towards the northern sky, we have this W. Actually, looks more like an M right now. Um, but this is Cassiopeia. That's our number six. Ethiopian queen. Sitting right next to her, and if you see a house sort of shape right here, this is Cepheus, the Ethiopian king. And again, they um, made uh, Zeus pretty angry and uh, got thrown up in space. Right next to them, these are circumpolar constellations because right there, that is the North Star. North Star is the tail star in the Little Dipper. And if you look right there, there's the Little Dipper. And I know that's a little one because right here is the Big Dipper. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the Big Dipper. Seven stars. One of them really close to the northern horizon. And again, here in Virginia, most of the stars located in this area are going to be really tough to see. But this is uh, Ursa Major. This is our 17th. There are some neat stars in there, none of which I'm going to hold you to. This is Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. Um, that is our number 18. And this is our 18A. That is Polaris, um, the name for what we commonly call the North Star. Polaris is its name. You notice these stars that are actually sort of going around the Little Dipper. This is Draco the Dragon, and you can sort of draw him with a head, and then he's got a really long tail that's just kind of zigs and zags going around the Little Dipper, and even somewhere between the Little Dipper and the Big Dipper. But this is Draco, that is our number eight. Um, go off in this direction, and uh, not exactly sure where to start. Um, let's start down here with this little pentagon. Um, this is one of the fish in Pisces. And if you take this thing all the way down here, and again we have uh, basically a kite with a really long tail. 
if you take this thing over to about that star right there, I'm going to hold it there because I want to show you a couple other constellations before we get there. Um, we have Pegasus, the flying horse. If you look right here, this is the biggest um, square you can make with very little information in between. I know you can probably make squares all over here, but this is the biggest square you can make with um, literally almost nothing inside of it. This is the body of the flying horse. That is called the Great Square of Pegasus. Not quite square the way I drew it. Um, if you take a look here, this is uh, supposed to be one of its legs. Its head is located in this direction, but it's a lot easier to see this. Um, I don't see a flying horse. I see a big screen LCD TV um, with an easy carrying handle. But this is, uh, I'm sorry, Pisces, which we're not quite done. I'm not going to name it yet. This is uh, Pegasus. Pegasus is our number 13. Lucky 13. Okay, now going off Pegasus, um, this is a TV. Um, let's say we don't actually have it hooked up to Fios. Um, it, we actually have rabbit ears. And if you take a look, um, this is the rabbit ear for this antenna. Works over in this direction. Um, this is uh, Andromeda the daughter of Zeus, the one who gets uh, captured by Medusa that Perseus has to come save. Um, Andromeda is our number one. And one neat note, the farthest thing that you can see in space with your naked eye is uh, called M31. It is the Andromeda galaxy and it's this little fuzzy section right here um, which may be easy to, easier to see if I didn't draw um, one of the constellations through it. But this is the Andromeda galaxy um, again, Andromeda Galaxy would be roughly about this size if we could see it in its entirety, um, but all we can see from 2.4 million light years away is the very center, the very brightest part of that galactic core. Now we can sort of see the end of uh, Pisces, so I'm going to go ahead and give number 14 Pisces. Okay, um, I'm going to have to start going through some of these because I want to make sure I've got them. Um, Andromeda, Auriga, Cancer, two dogs, male and a female king and queen. We got the dragon, we got the twins, we got the bunny, we got the hunter, we got the flying horse. And I said that was, oh, I'm sorry, this is number 12. Um, we have uh, Perseus, we have Pisces, we have Pleiades, we have Taurus, and we have those. We found every one we're supposed to find. So that's the way they look. Um, let me give you another view. Um, again, there's north and there's south. It's north because the north star is in that sky. Can you see them if I flip them this way? Can you still see things? Can you see uh, Gemini, Orion, Big Dog, Little Dog, the Y, the Cornucopia, can you see uh, the big square with its antenna? And there's the Andromeda galaxy. Um, can you see the fishes that go through there up to that point? Um, can you see Taurus the bull? Can you see the Pleiades? Uh, can you see the Little Dipper, the Big Dipper, Draco going through this direction? And I give you another view for number three. Same sort of thing. There's the Little Dipper, there's Polaris, so north is in this part, there's the Big Dipper. Draco kind of zooms in and out. Um, we have Perseus, the Cornucopia, up here by the uh, Zenith, the W, the House. Um, we have the TV with the easy carry handle, rabbit ear antenna. Um, we have the fishes going off this way for Pisces. Um, Cetus the Whale is actually a little bit right there. Um, over here we have Orion, we have the Bunny, the Big Dog, the Little Dog, Gemini, Auriga, Cancer. So they're basically this way. When I walk outside, um, I am basically looking, uh, <laughs> I hate that when that happens. I'm looking east, so what I have to do is I actually have to turn 90 degrees, but I know where the, the Little Dipper is, I know where the North Star is from my house, so all I have to do is I walk, when I walk out I'm looking pretty much, I'm sorry, in this direction, but you have to look in this way and I can see the North Star, and then once I find the North Star I can find everything else. Um, if you do look for Orion, very easy constellation, Gemini easy, Taurus easy, 
Um, if you can find those, you're looking pretty much to the southern sky, and um, you can look, maybe look find those, and then once you find those, maybe you can find the other ones that are around you. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Um, I appreciate it, and I'm hoping that you can go outside and locate constellations of the winter sky. Thank you again. Bye-bye.